Welcome everybody and many thanks um, for coming to this talk by Nell Luna, who is our returning BSA resident. Uh, just to begin with a note on what the BSA residence means. The British School of Athens or BSA Arts Residence Residency and Bursary is offered to a practice-based PhD student at UAL on an annual basis. The scheme furthers the BSA's mission to support UK-based researchers within its broad arts, humanities and social sciences remit. And it's delivered in partnership with research at Camberwell, Chelsea and Wimbledon Colleges of Arts. Applications for the next residency will open later in this year. And the residency is for two or three months, usually in the spring and autumn term because the summer is just too hot and the resident gets Time, funded time at the BSA and a studio. But tonight we're going to hear from Nell Luna, who will discuss her experience at the British School of Athens. She will discuss how being surrounded by archaeologists and interaction with real objects and artifacts impacted her research into the Lamb of God, commonly known as the Agnus Dei. This image of a sheep representing Christ and sacrifice has been in common usage since Roman times. So I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, so Nell will talk for about 20 minutes, then post your questions afterwards. I may also have a question, as I said to Nell, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, sit back and enjoy what, which, what I am sure will be a fascinating talk. Thank you. Over to you. Nell, over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Elia, you pop, can pop the slides up. Thank you. Hello, um, I am um, uh, Nell Luna and I was the um, sixth, I think, um, artisan residence of the British School. Um, and I just want to say one or two things about uh, the, the, the British School. It is um, uh, the it's right in the middle of Athens. Uh, the site was bought, I think, by Edward the Seventh or something at the at a big turn of the nineteenth century. And what what it, it, it's a pair of mansions that were presumably somewhere quite rural, um, and um, in a big plot of land. And this has now turned out to be the absolute coolest spot in Athens it's possible to be. Um, it's very expensive and urbane, feels a bit like Marylebone beyond the, 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 the precincts of the actual school. So what you've got in, 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 in staying there is an extraordinary opportunity to inhabit uh, this, this really rather decorous old fashioned kind of world, but yards from from the middle of the middle of everything. So it's in that respect, it's it's it's. In, sort of rather incredible and and wonderful, and um, you have you get given a <clears throat> a flat and uh, a studio which are joined together. It's the whole top of one of the mansions, the top of the governor's house, and a stipend for up to three months to live there and to be be an artist researcher. And that's if that wasn't amazing enough. One of the best things that you get when you go to the British School in Athens is that um, you get treated like an academic and anybody who's a PhD candidate like myself, uh, particularly if you're not kind of on a technical scholarship or something, will constantly feel like they're not really an academic and they're sort of um, playing at it and, and not really, really an academic. But they really do treat you like an academic. The place is full of academic researchers of various kinds. Uh, you get this extraordinary um, uh, gift, which is a um, pass, which is issued by the government of Greece, uh, and they issue it to academics to access um, archaeological sites and museums for free almost whenever you like. Uh, it's a timed pass. It's, I've got it for two years. and. Uh, with it comes the, the the capacity to be able to flit in and out of museums at will. And um, this talk that I want to want to explain to you is not so much about my research. It does refer to my research, but at the same time, I want to refer to how the residency 
uh, really contributes towards you being able to research. And one of the crucial ways it contributes towards you being able to, to research is the fact that you get kids pass, which means that you can go and if you want to be studying side area footwear in museums, you can just wander in with complete insouciance to look at three lots of sandals and walk out again, knowing you can go back tomorrow. And that um, is an incredible gift, actually. Not only can you, can you avoid the cues and all that kind of thing, but it makes you feel really focused and purposeful. And um, it's, uh, it's, 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 very, it, 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 it's a very nice part of it. Um, so my own research um, is, is figurative, but what I want to say about um, the, the residency, as PhD researchers, you're constantly being pushed to look at the context of what you're researching and what you'll be contributing to. Whatever stage you're at, whatever stage you're at, you, you're constantly saying, what are the discourses you're where can you look at this? And whether you realise it or not, our thinking, our research is lodged in the hegemony of Western culture. Even if you think your research project is not lodged in the hegemony of Western culture, it's completely unconnected with it. The fact that you think that is already a link to it, it, it being lodged in that, even if it's in reaction to it. And I, I think if you imagine that there's this crucible of culture, which you're going to examine as something lively, animate, um, relevant um, firsthand, it's quite different from looking at books or even thinking about what these words like Western hegemony actually mean. My own project is, con is concerned with the potential transformation of an image of an animal. As, as um, Malcolm said, it's the image of the Annas Day, which is the Lamb of God, a little, little image has not changed since Roman times of, of of the of of Jesus being the sacrifice um, uh, for our sins and, and and so on, and so I took myself to to to, to look at um, the hybridity of animal forms that you get in 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 um, uh, uh, on Greek buildings. Um, so th th this is actually from the top of the Parthenon. It's from the Acropolis Museum, but here you've got an interaction between a um, a horseman and a, and a and a and a and a warrior and it's it's it they these are the little tiny um they're not tiny actually it's about a meter square that 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 um that that sculpture which which exists between the dentals right at the top of the pediment of the Parthenon um so those are called the metopes and this is a th this is a a figure which is the um a, 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 um, a tribe called the Lapith, which are um, fighting these 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 satires but the the extraordinary dexterity um uh, of of the way they negotiate hybrid forms is quite extraordinary um and one of my other uh, concerns when going to greece was to look at images of the feminine and 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 relationships with the feminine um and um it, I, in a, being in amongst in with other academics there and particularly other archaeologists meant that I could look at the ten, temples of Artemis and all the um, elements of how they have how, how, how um, the, the populace got treated uh, in terms of um, you know rituals around uh, puberty and, and uh, childbirth and so on but I was also very interested in, in how images of um, the feminine are pictorially referenced within the, the sculptures. This is, um, this actually, this particular figure became quite important in that image, which is on the flyer for this talk. This is one of those um, figures that sit in a pediment of, of draped figures. Uh, this is from Delphi, but uh, one of the figures that sit in the, in the draped pediment. Um, but I can't explain to you how extraordinarily exciting it is to be able to see these things up close yourself in person firstly they're much larger than you might think because they are all generally pieces of architecture they're not sculptures so you're actually really close to them and you'll be able to make your own research inferences you can go up close to them you can photograph them so for me that actually freed this image which as i said exists in the flyer as the maternal figure in my in my pieta uh it's incredibly suggestive the 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 the, the figures which are half ruined are incredibly suggestive um um, uh, um, this is the other part of of um, of of my um, flyer, which is um, actually a, a different version. The the uh, 
it's Jesus being held by Mary. But here, this is actually the Minotaur, and that is Theseus killing the Minotaur, which I've dressed up to I I imagine that the Minotaur could, could be a sheep. But you wouldn't be able to get these inferences from books. You wouldn't be able to get these plastic forms, this inter level of interaction from, except if you were standing in front of it. And I think as an artist researcher, it frees you up to be able to think of it in a very fluid way, um, which is incredibly exciting. And I hadn't um, allows the fresh perspectives. I hadn't expected that first hand interaction to be quite so um, evocative and helpful in terms of actually coming home, being able to glue it together, to be able to record it, to be able to draw it together, collide things together and have the space to do it. Um, at the same time on a residency, it has to be said, there's always an element of feeling like you need to be making the most of it. How can I possibly be making the most of my time being here? Someone's paying for me to be here. Someone's looking after my life at home. And how on earth can I make the most of being here? And, uh, I, and maybe it's an inversion of FOMO or something. I felt very keenly and I don't think I'm alone in that. And it's ex exacerbated by the fact that you don't really have any of the normal things that might occupy your time um, if you were at home, like watching TV or hanging out with friends or something. You're quite isolated and like everything, it's a two-edged sword. It's magical to be alone and the thing you very much wanted to happen has now happened and you're there, but how can you make the most of it? And in that respect, I, I recommend anybody considering such a residency to have something small to hand that they can start working with straight away because it's quite daunting to think when am I going to start making the thing that I've come here to make because you you, you may you may not get to this point so th this for me was uh, it started off by simply being I need to actually I'm a painter I just need to start painting something so I started off by um, I went in early spring as Malcolm says it gets too hot to go in summer you're in an attic um, it's boiling hot you can't really be out there in the, in the high summer I went went in March and uh, the, 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 as I said it's on this lovely um, semi-rural plot in the middle of you know um, incredibly built up Athens and uh, the garden was full of sort of blue black irises uh, which you get in this country Iris Germanica but here because it was because it's a hotter climate they came out earlier and they were they were ex they were all over the the, the campus and um, I started to paint their progress as bleeding, uh, blooming, going to see the whole thing. Uh, and of course, you, you think you're doing something in isolation, but you never quite are because these actually played into my to my thesis about processes around the feminine. Um, in my looking at the Agnes Day, I also have been looking at images of, of, of the Virgin Mary, who, uh, as Marina Warner reminds us, is alone of all her sex. She doesn't process through the normal... Uh, systems of menstruation, um, aging, perspiration, puberty, all those things. She stays the static, unaging woman throughout her entire life. So these are just images. These are small canvases. And I, I just I, I think I did about 18 while I was there. I just picked a flower, took it back, painted it um, uh, as they were dying, blooming, dripping uh, and so on. Um, and uh, they it was they were useful size because I could they became like a postcard of what I was working on. But of course they play into your whole com the whole conversation around uh, what you're working. And I think this is the magic of the residency. It gives you time to link what you're organically working on. I mean I just found flowers in the garden that I wanted to put something down and I wanted to record something. I was also aware of the fact that you you you, you give them um, you give. Um, uh, a gift to the British school for having you there and I thought well I you know in case I don't produce anything worth having what I'll do is I'll give them one of these small pictures but in fact it became a whole polemic around processes around uh, around uh, the you know feminine subjectivity and that was incredibly helpful and, and an enduring uh, part of, of of what I felt I achieved there um, uh, so that's what these are all about um, The other part of, of of them that I worked on was also trying to make this femininity very explicit. And these were two I did right at the end, which I worked on a jute canvas, very, very heavy, unprimed jute canvas. 
um, and they are very um, are dragged in pigments and um, uh, oils and dust from the floor. And this is almost in a, in, in, in a violent um, um, act against the, 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 the position of, 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 of femininity. Uh, that, is, that is how it's set out in, it's very static, it's set out in a very rigor, very um, particular way in, 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 in historically, women are set out in, in, in a very limited two-dimensional way throughout history. So this, these, these were more, more of some of the stuff I did before I came home. Um, but the other, the other helpful part about this residency was that you're amongst academics who aren't um, artists, you're the only artist. So not only do you have to stand your ground and be able to sort of say, yes, you can do a PhD through a process of painting out things that you're not, you're not sure of the answer, this is the research. Um, but it's also incredibly interesting because you can't be lazy, you can't use words like, I don't know, um, feminine subjectivity or othering or something. These are not words that, 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 um, that archaeologists use and it forces you in many respects to, to have to think like an academic, and I found that incredibly, incredibly useful. Um, and one of the other things I wanted to flag up as being incredibly interesting and useful about this residency was the fact that not only is Greece, you know, available to you and you, you've got a bit of money and you can do things, you can travel. So this is, I went to Delphi, which is one of the most extraordinary um, pieces of architecture um, that there are. In fact, I think it's probably one of the most moving experiences that I've ever had. It's a piece of cityscape that is in the bowls of these mountains, and it's um, where there was an oracle and a temple to Apollo there. And uh, because I had my access all areas pass, I could get in there, you know, before the doors open, and this incredibly silent valley. Um, with these most extraordinary set of, um, it's hard even fair to call them ruins, they are um, remarkable human scale, uh, intimate buildings that are incredibly um, moving, the whole site is incredibly moving, but I particularly wanted to go there because it had a temple to Apollo, and I was interested in sacrifice because the, the Annus Dei is an image of sacrifice. And coming back to why the BSA is so valuable, I had an interaction which just describes how how it works when you're there, how it worked for me. I am very interested in how um, um, I used to be an architect, so I'm, I'm and I'm interested in the fact that these figurative elements are connected with architecture, they're decorations of buildings and so on. But more than that, I'm also interested in the way the the buildings are set up um, in order to be able to incorporate the sacrifice of animals. Um, so I, I had some idea about this before I went, but I started to research it. The British School has got the most extraordinary library, quite jaw-dropping library, uh, unbelievable. And I also would say that it's right next to part of the land of the British School uh, has been sold to the American School, and the American School have also got an incredible library, which you've got access to, and other scholars um, researching there. And again, I would stress that you're the only artist, which is magical, special, and also rather daunting. Um, but uh, so it, the library took me to try to find out about how animals process through the process of sacrifice and how this was written into the architecture. Uh, the, 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 um, if, um, if, if we, um, the, the Parthenon, which is the, the most famous of, of the temples that you'll all know, which was the first slide, is actually set backwards. So the, the 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 front of the building, which is a bit overlooking Athens, is is actually the front. But the, the animals are designed to process up the back up a series of staggered ramps. The whole building is is, is turned on its on it on its back so that the animals can process process up in in a, in a relatively calm way because otherwise they'll they it'll be too steep for them to go up the front. And the Temple of Apollo here, I was very interested in the fact that. It has got us. They they sacrifice goats here, and they um, the ramp going up to it is kind of grooved and and um, uh, ridged, and I was trying to understand why that was grooved and ridged. And eventually, through a few books, I found out that it was something to do with animal sacrifice. I spoke to the director of of the British School, um, who is just left actually, but the director, if you go, is an wildly knowledgeable, very senior um, archaeology professor who will know huge amounts of things that you don't know about. And I said to him, do you know what's going on here? What's this about? And he said, 
I think it's about animal sacrifice and about um, um, uh, the, the, uh, about the nature of the oracle, directed me towards some other academics. And eventually I ended up not being able to meet, but I ended up in a email correspondence with a an academic from um, Norway, Sweden, apologies, from Sweden, who, I, who explained to me about... Um, willingness to sacrifice so the grooves that you've got in this temple which i actually don't have a photograph here because you're not allowed to approach that part of the building are so that the goat doesn't stumble if the goat stumbles the sacrifice is considered null and void if there's any tremulousness on the side of the sacrificed the animals to be sacrificed the the the, 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 the it's a bad omen and, and the animal is not acceptable and she pointed me in the direction of some books which i found at the bsa which i wouldn't have found without talking to her which i wouldn't have found without talking to the director saying that they, they actually had an extraordinary system in uh, the priests used to drop water on the head of the animal uh so it, which it would nod its head which was nodding its acceptance of being sacrificed and part of my project is about the uh, man's domination of every species on the earth and part of my project has actually got an ecological aspect to it so this has become and it, this was developed at the bsa this whole product that i found in conversation with somebody else about this process and how animals are viewed and have been viewed but you know s s s since since man first started his domination of the earth all transpired in, in the actual plastic form of the architecture and this happened on the residency and it was not a, something that i could have imagined having happened before and i think these flights of fancy are exactly what a residency like that can offer you the chance to to go up blind alleys and to find out extraordinary things um, I mentioned before that you have to leave a gift for the BSA. This is an interpretation I of one of the metopes. So that is, um, it's a female warrior in my case, and that is a um, sheep that she is half part of, not a, not a um, um, horse. And the it's it's actual one, uh, one meter square. So the metopes are quite large. And I actually had a long conversation with. Um, the director and he said the metopes were colored highly colored although they're all washed and bleached and doesn't feel highly colored but they were so that is how it ended up like this and um the last thing i want to say before concluding here is that athens is a fantastic city um and um it's set on many hills i think oh i think there's six or seven i'm not sure if it's rome at seven but uh, there's, there's certainly got a number of hills and one of the hills is called lycabetus which has got a it's got st george's chapel on the top and um, i never thought i could walk as many stairs as i managed to walk when i was in athens it's i used to approach 90 100 stairs routinely um on a walk and think i'll never make it up in one go and of course by the time you leave you can do 180 without stopping but this this picture is taken from outside the bsa up on the hill and lycabetus is, is is as i said is the hill it's actually the hill where socrates grew up um at the time there wasn't a british school um, but anyway, um, and so and that's the view of the Acropolis. So that's the front of the Acropolis you can see, and that's the path along the middle. And the the, um, the, the, the the road the road to the front of the temple, which the hundred oxen used to walk up once a year, is actually on the back of that. But in the distance, you can see those are the docks. Those are Piraeus docks, um, and those, are, in fact, that's the first island you can see. So the whole. The, the, the relationship, as much as it does with Stonehenge and many sacred areas, the relationship with the building, with the worship, with the decoration, with the architecture, with the people, is all connected with the landscape. And you ha really have a sense of this uh, walking around Athens. That's me. Well, oh. Now, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can see you. Yes. Good. Well, that was a really wonderful talk. Thank you so much. And it's strange because it's, because you were, I mean, you were talking about how you went to Athens and, and found your project in, in Delphi in a way you hadn't expected. But also, I think what really struck me was the um, the what you talk about, about being being next to these objects and, and next to the architecture and how much that mattered. And strangely enough, that, that brought to mind uh, something very proximate to us in Chelsea, which was the time I asked Dr. Kimati Donkor before he was a doctor, when he was doing his PhD, to talk um, about his research one one open evening, and it was a it was a dark evening, it was a dark and stormy evening, 
and I remember we were in we we're in the green room, which uh, used to be a kind of open space where people could sit, and and it, it was, as I say, a dark and stormy night. And I said, "Tell us about your research, Kimati." And he said, "Turn the lights off." And it was like a theatrical production, and he said he pulled open the curtains and pointed to tapes and said, "That's my studio," which it was because he was working, and in a sense, yeah. he'd done the same thing with tape. He'd he'd gone up close to everything, to the architecture yeah. and the iconography, and he'd worked yeah. from it. And he'd worked from it in an extremely scholarly way. So it was that combination of an artist engaging fully, completely as an artist with the objects, but also from that drawing out all kinds of scholarship to do, in fact, with issues of gods and goddesses and the connections between Africa and Europe. So it just struck me as being very similar, uh, you know, what you were saying. That yeah, that, I know his PhD. I can imagine yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> Exactly, and I, I I hadn't expected the interaction. Um, I do remember people saying, I mean, I know that zoos don't exist anymore, and it's not quite a reasonable parallel, but I'm going to make a poor one anyway. People used to say to me, when zoos don't exist, you don't have that connections, you know, yards from um, from a um, from an actual panther or a lion, you know, you, you you you. And I think that this is very much the same. It's you've actually got a an actual connection with something so close and you can you can put your hand out and touch it almost and it means that certainly as an artist and you know i'm sure everybody here is, is an artist of one kind or other you interact with it in a completely fresh way um that i couldn't have imagined excellent we've had a question from josh who is going to follow you to athens and josh wanted to know if you could talk a bit more about how you interacted with the scholars at the bsa um Slowly, actually, if I'm if I'm honest, um, the, um, the 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 campus is set on um, uh, several buildings, but there's two big mansions. There's the governor's house, of which you're on top of, and you've got a little kitchen, and then there's a the, there's a the other mansion, which is, contains a library, the the and, and various. Um, 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 other functions and the hostel upstairs. They call it the hostel. It's sort of like um, 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 you can stay, you, you can become a member and stay. And um, I should have actually just mentioned that I, one of the other things that's really nice that happened when I was there, because I was happened to be there at the end of the year, end of the kind of academic year for for for, for in June, the, um, for, uh, the the museum season, if you like, that all that many um, cities, uh, many countries have got. Um, uh, schools there. So there's a Danish school opening I went to, the Finnish school, the French school, the Irish school. And that was incredibly interesting. Um, um, so they were they, 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 that was as fruitful as well. But in terms of in terms of our site, you're a little bit as the artist because of the way you're set up with the studio, you're a little bit separate. You've got to make an effort to mm -hmm. actually if the, uh, in the hostel, you could they have breakfast every day and because you've got your own little kitchen you go oh i can't be bothered to get up and go and have breakfast between i don't know eight and eight thirty or whatever it was eight and nine you know and meet the other scholars i'll just have a yogurt or a coffee in my room or in, in my studio and I, you do go a bit potty because you sleep with your work you wake up with your work um and one of the things i hadn't expected malcolm was when when, when because I haven't done a long residency before. I've got piles of kids, you know, I haven't done that. Mm. I hadn't expected to get to the point where, I mean, I'm sure we can all relate to this, to get to the point where I really, really wanted to to be alone with my work. I've been fighting for this moment. And then when you're alone with your work, you go, it's going badly. Everything's awful. I hadn't expected that all the distractions that you go, oh, you know, I'm going to go to the pub or I'm going to go and meet a mate or something. You haven't got any of those things. You've just got your work. And if your work's going badly and you're sleeping with your work and you're eating with your work and you're waking up with your work and going to sleep with your work, and unless you go and find someone else to talk to, you don't have to talk to anybody yeah. all day. It's quite isolating and odd. And I went a little bit mad. And I don't think that, Josh, you'll find that any different. And I would suggest very, I, I would vehemently suggest that you don't do what I do and spend the first month in proud isolation thinking, I'm alone at last, thank goodness. But actually pick yourself <laughs> off in the morning and go to speak to people who are, I don't know, researching things that you didn't even know you could research and you'd never given any thought to, like little tiny bits of ash or, collected with funeral well, pyres in well, some really weird sort of tiny little corner of something 
because it's incredibly niche. Every area is in, I mean, what people are studying, PhDs are incredibly, they get narrower and narrower. There's, there's few returns at Attica between sort of 730 BC and 731 BC. They're, they're incredibly interesting. And I, I had found that um, our um, archaeologists aren't necessarily loquacious and they do need, they, they can be, they can be tentative about talking. And it, so I found my way slowly and I wish I'd made more of an effort earlier because they, um, well, they, 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 they are rich rewards. Well, uh, you just got to work cuts, hard. It cuts both ways because as you said, you're the only artist uh, and they're, they are, not they don't have your skill set either and that's what is important to remember because how the, how this relationship with the bsa started was that i i had the good luck to supervise a phd with malcolm Schofield, who used to uh be you know important to the bsa uh he's a classical scholar and he 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 said to me after the phd was finished he said look we've had artists artists in residence but in some ways that's too big a gap what if we had a phd uh, student who was practice based and we could build a bridge. So from their point of view, they also want to 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 know what you're about and what you're doing as well. Did you find that? Yes, they did. And actually, um, I did get people who were asked. Um, I did. Um, I, I was uh, I, 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 I'm afraid I, uh, with with permission, moved the furniture around. So I had a distinct bedroom bit and uh, kitchen bit and then a studio bit because I wanted to work that way and so I had a kind of open house and I had a bit of a gallery going in, in, my, in my space and mm. I had um, uh, had people coming around for visits and I offered drinks and that kind of thing and I think that helped actually but uh, I got the impression that it was up to me to step forward and quite rightly too I was the yeah. guest so I did, and you, you 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 give a talk as well, and um and uh, yeah. that's engaging. Um, it's uh, it, it's just was exciting to see yourself for a moment being seen as an academic because very often you don't feel mm. like that. <laughs> uh, there's a question from Thanasis. Uh, we're all we're all glad to see Thanasis, uh, who is now associate researcher, but. Uh, working elsewhere mainly. And that says, thank you for this talk. It felt like a trip back home. Great mm -hmm. testament of the value of the residency. Question is, has the prominence of stone as a material in ancient sites impacted your practice? Has stone as a material in ancient sites? Gosh, the NASA, that's a curved ball. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> expecting that at all. Um, I don't know is the answer. Uh, what mm. I can think of is the fact that it is stone means that a, a, a lot of it's around still, which is kind of wonderful. Um, but at the same time, I love the, the suggestibility of it being ruined, does that make any sense? Part of it, the, the bits that aren't there, the bits that have fallen off, sheared off, to an artist are so suggestible. Um, I guess that that's stone, and I think that's exciting. I'm embarrassed to say that in my last week, I discovered, I don't know how I avoided this, perhaps I just was so fixated on what I wanted to think about that I didn't do it, but one of the academics I came across was studying the Middle Ages, and you just don't think of, you know, ancient Greece as being the Middle Ages. It doesn't seem relevant at all. But there's an incredible museum, seconds from the BSA, I'm embarrassed to say, which is to do with the, the medieval times. And coming back to your question, it's full of um, wooden things. It has got some stone things, but there's a lot of there's lots of um, a fresco painting. There's a lot of painting on wood and so on. And the, the feeling of it is entirely different. The whole thing is is much more um, uh, handmade, much less fine uh, in some respects. And so I, I, I actually, if I'm thinking about comparing the wood and the stone, I, I, I think it is it is true that the stone. It, I don't know if the stones inf influence my own practice because I'm a painter, but. The um the as I said the 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 the, the, the massive quality of it is is it's, it's very permanent and moving. Yeah. Sorry, I should have had a better answer. No, I don't no have it's fine. You're, you're not obliged <laughs> to have an answer. We we haven't we haven't uh, got another question at the moment. The one one may emerge in the next uh, few seconds. But I wanted to ask you now. What uh, in a sense, what do you carry forward from the BSA into what you're about to do now with the research? I think uh, the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, uh, Malcolm tells me that you get a permanent title, which I shall carry on using. You do. Arts, but, but... <laughs> arts, 
Arts resident, arts associate, sorry, of the BSA. So that's very nice. But one of the things I found, <laughs> certainly when I wrote to others, because I had this a little bit before I went, I kind of would write academics in other countries and sometimes they'd write back. But what I found very helpful was the fact that when you were there, you could, via John, the wonderful um, 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 uh, director at the time who introduced me to people, but he'd only set up a sort of, let me introduce you to, you know, uh, Nell, who's doing a residency here. It's the fact that you, 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 you can approach people, you can approach other uh, academics, which I loved. Um, I met up with someone um, who is the head of Hellenic Studies at... Um, um, at, 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 in Athens and you know had a cup of coffee with him and I went to the Cycladic Museum and so on so I, I think that kind of co level of confidence from that you actually are you 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 are situated within a context within discourses I found really helpful actually yeah before uh, we'll maybe come back to what what goes forward but did you did you actually um also find any artistic context in Athens? Uh, any contact with the art schools or, or artists in the city? Um, I did. I went to the art school. Um, it's, it's interesting about their arts program there. Um, as far as I can tell, it's quite a, a, a Beaux-Arts system. It's a, mm. um, very, uh, the, almost the, 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 the absolute goal of many um, um, Greek artists is to is to have a teaching job um, at, at at the Athens the Athens School of Fine Art, which is a five year de oh, I lie it's a three year degree. Uh, I think it's a three year degree. I went to their degree show um, and the first year is it's almost like the Royal Academy or something. You you um, the old Royal Academy where you draw mm -hmm. plaster casts and so on. It's very uh, it's terribly. Um, I don't want to say conventional because there's huge value in it, but it's terribly it's classical. Uh, and, um, you know, you learn to draw hands one week and you learn to draw feet the next week kind of thing in a way that you certainly would never do, if you will. Probably not a bad thing and probably is a bad thing. I don't know. It's just different. Um, so uh, and um, I, I, I have to say that I found that I'm sure there was more of an art scene. I had one or two artist friends that I knew anyway, and I, I, there probably was more of an art scene that was exciting than the ones I found. I did go to the um, Contemporary Art Museum and the, uh, um, the, the New Athens Museum of, of, of Modern Art, but I didn't find it as exciting as um, it can be in, in London, I have to say. But there is a, a completely magical thing that I've discovered, which I shall tell you, and you can exploit if you can make it work. Um, one of my art friends who um, attended the Athens School of Fine Art told me about the Athens School of Fine Arts annexes. And I said to her, what are the annexes? And she said, because they're an old and um, illustrious School of Fine Art, quite well endowed, they've got annexes in Delphi, in um, Oh. Uh, Mykonos in different places and these are these are outposts of art schools so when you go there these annexes have got rooms which are studios and easels and you know lecture halls they're set up like mini art schools and she said you can apply to stay at the annexes and I thought wow gosh so I, I asked John about this my director and he said never heard of it uh, but why don't you find why don't we give it a whirl so I got the I got the form which you just download from them and you make an application as a visiting scholar if you can finish this one of the addicts which i think are 20 euros a night which in the case of some of the islands and they're very very um sought after you know very hard to get a, 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 a somewhere to sleep in some of these islands um and you can go and stay at these in incredible places so i stayed in delphi or uh, at, at the delphi art school which was utterly extraordinary it was a it was a, a building built in the 1940s for the Athens School of Fine Art, perhaps the 30s, a sort of futuristic modern thing. It looked like Blofeld's um, uh, had built the most imaginative house, sort of, sort of elaborate cantilevers. I was the only person there. The caretaker said, there's nobody else here. Here are the keys. Gave me the key to the front door. And the, the magical thing about it was that it was actually part of the sacred site. It was on the corner of the sacred site. Oh. So at night, it was quite creepy because there's enormous building that could sleep 40. There was just me in it. Really rather extraordinary, paying 20 euros. And, and, and the terrace, these big, huge cantilever ter uh, terraces which shoot out over the, over the landscape. And you could have supper up there, just you and the larks and the, and then the birds <sighs> and the silence. And you could, you, you could so close to Delphi, you could put your hand on it. 
So there are magical it things. Sounds idyllic. <laughs> yes. Well, Josh, I, I, Josh I, even now, even though Josh to, is making notes. So. <laughs> anybody who wants to know more, get in touch. Because I mean, I wasn't exploiting a loophole. It is, it, they, they, they vet you. No. You have to go through a vetting system. Yeah. It's fairly yeah. simple, but it is available, and I. Um, I found that incredibly <laughs> helpful. Josh, do contact me separately. I've got loads to tell you. But yes, I think I think I think Josh, I'm sure, <laughs> will buy you a coffee, a coffee at some point, and, and pump you for more information. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, look, uh, do you, just I mean, maybe as we are perhaps drawing to a close, just perhaps do you want to say how the experience at Athens is, is, is being taken into what comes next for you in the in the PhD. Well, what's how it's. It, it's it, it's breeded up for me uh, amazingly. I went firstly. I would say to people who want to apply, I applied twice. I only got it the second time, so don't be put off. First time I, I I was all over the shop. The second time I was much more focused. And the other thing I would say is that I went with a very specific focus to go and look at these hybrid forms because this is exactly where I was going to place myself. And actually has produced some incredibly interesting paintings, but because uh, it's also opened up a whole area of uh, polemical activity for me, and that is around um, ecology and, and dominance of animals. And there's, there's, there's a lot of that, actually. And even the animals that exist within the framework of all these different, they have a, a raft of, of hybrid animal forms. They have, you know, sirens and chimeras, a chimera's half horse, half leg, half Dolphin half extraordinary set of uh, figures, but for me it's opened up the the, the 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 relationship with animals and an ecological angle which I hadn't expected, and that was pretty much in conversation with how they how they sacrificed animals and and the role that sacrifice takes place. And I didn't expect that. I didn't think of it. I didn't expect it at all. Um, and I didn't expect um, uh, the relationship with the earth and this these kind of bleeding irises and how that played into the whole uh, polemic about, uh, you know, feminine subjectivity. So that, that's been unexpected and incredibly useful. Yeah. I mean, just one, one footnote to that was I was thinking of, you heard of Temple Grandin? Yes. Because, of course, she, she does this for modern industrial you know, she her her purpose in life is to find ways to because you were talking about the way that animals are calmed on the way to sacrifice. Well, that's yeah what she does, of course, uh, yes, with yes. industrial farming. Yes, exactly. And it's just an I have... interesting part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's she's uh she's extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really anyway, extraordinary. But um, but um, I, I I um if you can apply to go uh, go it's yeah, it seems a bit right. part of your life hard to find the time but um unbelievably worth it yeah thank you anyway look I, I, are there any final questions before we close down uh there there aren't but first of all I want to say uh thank you Nell that was an amazing talk really enjoyed it thank you so much and uh, thank you to Ellie Pitkin for organising this talk. And uh, Ellie, are you are you still there? Yes. Hello, I am. How yes. can I help? Ellie, Ellie, because because Nell has done such a bloody good job of selling this experience, <laughs> uh, perhaps people will want to know when when they might be able to apply. Absolutely. Well, um, we haven't got a set schedule yet for this year, but it will be in the next few months. Um, and there will be plenty of publicity circulating the information um, on the PGR hub um, and also via email. OK, thank you very much. But it will be before the end of this academic year at some point. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, good, good. OK, thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Nell. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, thank you, Malcolm. Yes, I think this, this, will, this will resonate with me this evening and beyond. So thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you very Bye -bye, much. Bye, everyone. Indeed.